Well, hello, hello, hello. I'm hoping I'm live. I'm hoping I'm around the right way. I'm late and I'll explain to you why in just a sec. I'm just having a quick look at my iPad to see if I can find myself and see if I'm around the right way. I am, I'm crooked, but I'm at least around the right way. Right, let me see if I can sort out things so you can see me rather than mostly the ceiling. Okay, that's a little bit better. Hi Sandy, hi Maureen. Lovely to have you join me. I'm sorry. I was setting up the stand I used to hold my phone, which is what I film on, and it snapped. Um, <laughs> it's plastic and it just snapped and where it snapped is the bit where it actually fixes onto the table so it's not a it doesn't have a stand as such it's got a clamp and the clamp has separated itself from the arm so I thought okay well, what do I do now because I don't have anything else I only have you know have this one thing so instead I have dug out a reel of duct tape which is sort of working I duct taped the two pieces together and I've duct taped the stand to my desk but looking at the angle of it it's not doing well so I'm hoping I will last the course this afternoon if I don't my huge apologies I'm going to have to urgently get a new one um, before next week and we'll just have to see how we go honestly life is never dull is it so I might have to put another bit of duct tape on there in a sec actually in fact I think I am because the whole thing's falling off Okay, so I'm going to try and talk to you at the same time as jury rigging this stand. I don't know if I can tear duct tape one handed. Let me come forward, see if I can kind of hold things steady with my arm. Can you still see me? Oh, this is great, isn't it? This is absolutely live, as you can tell, because nobody would ever pre record a session like this. Okay, Sandy says she doesn't mind me being a bit wonky. <laughs> yes. The stamping up wonky donkey. Yeah, I'm getting wonkier and wonkier. Look away for a minute because everything's going to wobble horribly. I'm trying desperately to get some duct tape off the reel without actually dropping the entire stand. Right, let me have a look. I should think I'm all over the place again. I'll try and keep it relatively straight while I tear off another 20 metres of duct tape and stick this to my desk. Okay, it's it's really heavy with the iPhone. I don't know if this is actually going to work or not. I'm just going to take off another bit of tape and we'll see. There we are. I've got pretty duct tape as well, which I bought for something else, but um, needs must. Right, let me have a look at this. I've got to kind of work out the physics of it, work out which way it's wobbling and then try and stop it going that way. And then we'll see. This may or may not work. We may get a crafting session today. We may not. I used this stand yesterday and it was fine. So I don't know what happened. Right. Okay. One more piece. One more piece. <laughs> talk amongst yourselves. Don't talk amongst yourselves. Tell me what you've been doing this week. You've got lots of time to type in a comment now without missing anything. And you can tell me what you've been doing this week, because I would love to know. OK. I can't imagine how much sticky there is going to be on my table after this. OK. Ooh, I don't, I don't know if this is going to hold. <laughs> I can't put the camera down and show you what this looks like now. Right, okay, so let me have a scroll up through the comments. So I said hi to Sandy and Maureen. Um, hi Pam, and hi Sandy, I've said Sandy, uh, and hello Kay. Okay, right, so I'm gonna quickly go through my introduction, very gently turn my camera down and maybe we'll get some crafting in, maybe we won't. 
<laughs> so I'll just have to see how I go. I am, of course, putting on hand cream because believe it or not, I was here with 10 minutes to spare, ready to do everything in good time and not be late. But you know, life happens, doesn't it? Okay. So Sandy's been starting on her Christmas card list and realizing she has to make another 100 cards, but she's doing some gardening. It sounds like you need a little bit of a break from things if you've got that many cards to make, Sandy. So well done on getting some garden done and well done on starting on your Christmas cards. Um, Pam's been walking and sea swimming and crafting with a friend who's not a stamping up friend, um, but hopefully she will be soon, Pam. Mary's here. Hello, Mary. Lovely to have you here. If you've just joined me, um, I've been doing running repairs on my camera stand, which broke as I was setting up, which is why I was late. Um, at the moment, it's duct taped to my table, but it's not doing well. So I will keep going as long as I can. I don't have an alternative that will hold my camera, I'm afraid. So it may be that we will have to um, stop today's live and pick it up maybe next week. But I'm fingers crossed. Okay, I've had a lovely week. I've been getting ready for some of my face-to-face -face classes, which is so exciting. I can't wait. And um, oh gosh, and last weekend, I, um, last week, yes, it was last weekend, I did some singing at last live in the open air. It was absolutely fantastic. Um, joined back with my choir live outside. Um, it was quite emotional. Um, it was absolutely lovely. We haven't sung together since March of last year. So that was amazing. We've continued online. We've got a thriving online choir, but it's just not the same as all being together. Um, okay, so yes, yeah, so Sandy agrees with me that she's a non-stamping up friend at the moment. And Pam says, sadly not, she's tried countless times. <laughs> Never mind, Pam. Never mind, just keep trying. Mary says hi to everyone. I think everyone else has said hi to everyone, although I may not have said that. All right, what's happening with Stamping Up? Um, celebration is continuing. Um, if you want to book the September Fancy Folds class, that is an in-person class running here near Lymington. Um, bookings for that close today. Um, it's £18 for the class, or give me a £28 order plus shipping, and that will cover your class. The class is on Monday, September the 20th in the morning, and we will make uh, templates for two different cards, which are either fancy fold cards or they are kinetic cards, so they have moving parts. So you'll make two of those with a template for each. You get written instructions, so when you get back home, you can remember what you did. You get all the measurements on a sheet, and you'll also make two lovely projects, one of each kind of card. So you can book that class by today. Um, the Beauty of the Earth sampler, which I showed you last week. I was going to quickly show you again this week very briefly, but I may just get straight to the crafting, I think, as our time may be limited. Um, you've got one more week to order that. Orders for that need to be in by next Friday. Um, if you can't remember what's in it, if you go back to my live video from last week, which you can see on the videos tab here, or you can go to my YouTube channel and see it there, then um, I go through everything that's in that. Uh, my YouTube channel is called the same as my Facebook one, uh, Handmade at Home with Sally Bowman. There are other Handmade at Homes out there, which is why I add my name in. Okay. Um, oh, and the last thing to say is that I won't be able to upload the recording of this video to YouTube until Monday. So I know some of you dip in and out or you come in late and then you go back to, to watch the recording. Um, you will be able to see the recording here on Facebook and replay that as often as you like. But if you normally go to YouTube to watch it, I'm sorry I can't upload it until Monday, but it will be there on Monday. Okay, now I'm going to very cautiously turn the camera face down onto my table and see if I can manage to do some live crafting. So I'm going to cover you over because I've already wobbled you around enough for one day, I think, and just see if I can get that to work. So bear with me. I have no idea whether we're going to get this done or not, but you don't, you don't know until you try, do you? Oh, that might work. I've put the camera in a different position to usual, which might improve the balance given that 
I've got everything taped together. Okay, let me just swap my microphone and get the microphone lead out of the way. I really did not want to have to spend money on a new phone stand, but I'm going to have to. So you're all going to have to go and place lots and lots of orders so that I can get a new phone stand. <laughs> okay, right, I'm going to take the covering off the lens and let's just see how we're doing. Okay, get, get it to focus, that's better. Okay, I'll see if I can just improve this slightly. Now you can see just a little bit of duct tape on the table there. Believe you me, there is there is a lot. There was a lot more on this reel of duct tape before I started today. <laughs> okay, right. So let me get some stuff on the table. Oh, I haven't shown you how I, that's my duct tape, which is much too pretty to use for running repairs, but never mind. All right, so today I'm going to be showing you crafting using this gorgeous sparkly paper. So this is the Bedazzling paper um, and you can get it free. You can't buy it, but you can get it free. Now, I love anything that's free and I really like being able to get a pack of this free. In fact, I've had several packs of it free. So this is one of the celebration choices. If you spend £45 on an order, whether you give me your order or whether you order in my online shop at sallybowman.stampinup.net, you can choose this as your free choice if you like. And you get something for free for every £45 you spend, which is great. So if I lift this up and tilt it, I'm hoping the camera will pick up that the pieces of glitter on this are really quite big and they're put down in a really orderly way in little rows. I have no idea how they do that, but um, yeah, it's really nice. It's very sparkly, as you can see. I've been tilting it and letting it catch the light. The pieces are six inches square. It's quite a heavy weight. Um, so it's backed with card, not just paper, although it's called glimmer paper. Um, and I'm just looking, it's eight, yes, eight, eight sheets in a pack. Now it goes a really, really long way because you can use all your tiny scraps to punch or die cut shapes or just add little strips to things. So I'm keeping all my little snippets like this. You can see here I've you know, got an end of something I die cut there. So don't throw any bits away. I'm sure you don't. I don't really need to tell crafters not to throw scraps away, do I? But it's absolutely beautiful, that paper. Now I've got some tips about using it and I've got three projects to show you, plus a bonus. So this is one that I created during my catalogue launch week um, on Facebook Live on the celebration day. So I die cut this beautiful tree um, and turned it into a Christmas card. I also I lift it up so hopefully you can see. I also layered it on a piece of the sparkly paper too. So of course it makes beautiful Christmas cards and in fact the first project I'm going to show you is a Christmas card but the other two are not. So it's definitely not just for Christmas. So Sandy's got two sets of this paper. I'm not surprised Sandy. <laughs> it is very lovely. So this is the Christmas card that I'm going to make with you now and I'll just pull all the bits out, get them on my desk. I'm blowing off one of my stamps, I don't know what's on it, something fluffy. That's never good. All right, find my ink pads, find my ribbon. And some dimensionals. Okay. So let me talk you through the card and then I will make one. So I have a basic grey card base. 
then I've got a layer of the bedazzling paper now you can of course instead of making it a full layer you could cut the center out so make almost like a frame shaped piece of the bedazzling paper and lay that down because your gap in the middle is going to be hidden by the paper here um, so you could save a little bit that way and then I'm hoping you can see that I have embossed some of this beautiful peaceful place paper this is in the new autumn winter catalogue the whatever it is uh, July to December mini catalogue it's the most stunning paper it has some silver embossed snowflakes on it um, and then I've put it through the evergreen embossing folder that probably isn't showing on camera but anyway there's lots and lots of conifers here it's a lovely folder and it embosses those trees at varying depths um, I think you can probably see it better on here. And then I've cut some, die cut some trees from the sparkly paper. So this tree here is from the mountain, uh, Majestic Mountain Dies. So you've got two lovely trees here which cut in real detail. And then the little trees are from the cabin dies so this is in the same suite as the patterned paper so you've got these three dies here and you also have this die here that cuts out little snowflakes so you can either cut um, apertures in your background and put the sparkly paper behind or you can do what I've done which is use the confetti that comes out and I've just added that as little snowflakes and then I've got some snow at the bottom um, and a stamped tag so let me show you what I did Put all the bits in here ready I've done the die cutting as usual because uh, my machine does not fit well under the stand for my camera who knows maybe the new one will I'm just checking I haven't left any bits in there all right so I've got lots and lots of little pieces in here lots and lots of these tiny little I don't know if they're stars or snowflakes they work for all all of those so I've got some of the trees that I cut with the cabin dies which are lovely I like them the kind of shaggy trees um, in they're in three sizes it's another snowflake this is my tree I cut using the majestic mountain dies so this is really lovely too and then I've got a piece for the ground which I cut uh, I'm looking for my set of dies here we are using the inspiring canopy dies so this is the same one I showed you the trees earlier and then you've got this line here which just cuts you a wavy ground now of course you could cut a strip and then just cut a random curve or two with your scissors and that would work fine as well um, if you're going to cut this glimmer paper with dies if you possibly can turn it over and then put your die on the paper side because you will get um, a nice clean cut and it's a little bit um, kinder to your dies than cutting directly onto the metal so that's my top tip for that um, if you're cutting this using a trimmer which you might be if you're cutting a layer like this then I always keep an old trimmer blade and I write on it glimmer or glitter so that I don't use that blade for anything else so when I change out my blades because when I cut the card it's a, bit, a little bit fluffy I'm not getting a really clean cut I'll keep one of those blades and write on it that it's for this glittery card and it cuts it fine uh, although it may not cut paper without it fraying it cuts this absolutely fine um, the metal in the glitter will blunt a cutting blade really really fast so I use an old one and funnily enough an old cutting blade will last for absolutely ages for cutting this kind of paper I don't know why but it does um, so definitely keep an old blade or two for doing that and it's worth changing it out from your regular cutting blade just so that the one you use for paper lasts a bit longer so that's my piece for the ground then I've cut a tag here using the new tag dies and I thought I'd left those out to show you but I don't seem to have done I might find them in another bucket um, 
you never know if I do I'll show you uh, these are quite new to me I've only just got them and there are two shapes of tags um, and they've got like stitched edges and then there's also a die to cut these little I guess they would be reinforcing pieces that fit on there like that so they're really fab I love these I'm not actually going to be using that on this card because the bow completely hides the hole but um but it's there if I wanted it so that's the pieces so let me bring these back and start to glue things together if you've got any questions as we go do ask them and I would love to know if you've got any plans for the weekend let me know I've got a family thing this weekend which I'll be able to tell you about next week um, my husband's family rather than mine um, so family and family and and friends of of my in-laws so um, that's what we are going to be busy doing this weekend now this is quite heavy paper or card depending on which way you look at it so use a little bit of extra glue be a little bit more generous than you would normally and when I glue something on top of glimmer paper I always use more glue than I normally would because the glue f makes its way down into the spaces between the pieces of glitter so you need a little bit more to compensate from that and when I glue down a piece of something that has been embossed I always use some extra glue because on the back you've got quite a lot of debossed areas so those areas won't really be making contact so the ones that do need a bit of extra help so when you add embossing and glimmer together you need more glue than you would think it also takes a little bit longer to grab so I'm a little bit more patient with it than I normally am and I usually carefully turn it over and just really make sure that I've got good contact all the way around on the back and in fact I'm going to just drink a little drop of tea and give that a moment before I turn it back Kay says she guts hers so she doesn't waste it absolutely Kay yeah doing that that technique where you effectively make a frame of your glimmer paper yeah yeah that that saves you quite a lot because you'd have a really good sized piece there you would get your die cutting almost all out of that so that's a, a good tip all right so now I'm going to pop this on here I'm going to see how do I want my slope to be something like that I think now what I'd meant to do was to cut this to size earlier where I would have stuck it on my paper trimmed it and then stuck my paper to um, the card base but I didn't do that sometimes I just forget my methods never mind I can just do it this way so I'm just gonna snip this to size and glue it on but it'd be much easier to glue this to the patterned paper and then snip the excess off so I recommend that that's what you do there we are so that's another layer to go on and after that what I'm going to do is um, arrange my trees so I'm going to put the tag on the left so I think I like um, my tallest tree on the right actually I've slid my paper I wonder if there's any movement in that there we are I've got a tiny gap here but I think the tag's going to hide that So I'll put probably three trees here. I'll put 
two tall ones here and then a medium sized one in here and then I'm going to keep the others for another occasion. I just cut a whole load so that I had enough to play with. So let's pop those back in my bag and they'll be safe for next time. All right, so stick these down. Now with something detailed like this, I found I needed to roll it through my machine a couple of times just to get all the detail cut. So depending on your machine, you may find that that is a good thing to do. And it did take me a few minutes to poke the confetti out, but that's okay. I think it was worth it. Right, so I'll stick these two trees over on the left. And again, I'm using a bit more glue than I normally would because this is heavyweight paper. I've got glue all over my fingers. So when I press down, everything's sticking to me. Get a baby wipe. Wipe some of that off just before I move on. Okay, uh, right, where was I? I want some mini stamping dimensionals. I'm just going to make this tree a little bit 3D. That's a little bit too big for there, I think. I've got a cut down one here. And I'm just gonna cut one down for over there. I'm still sticky. Or maybe it's the glue off all that duct tape I had to use. Just cut a tiny piece there. Yeah, I was just checking that's not going to show from the front and I think it's okay. Let's pop that in place here. So all but the tag, that's my card front done. So now I'll bring in the tag. So this stamp says warm wishes from our home to yours and it's from the poinsettia petals set which has got a lot of lovely greetings in it. Um, there's so many images in this set that they've got to show them at only 65% normal size to get them all on the front. So that's why this looks considerably larger than that image there. And I have real red ink. hoping you can still see this. I've got to bring it fairly close to me, otherwise I can't see to stamp it. I'm hoping that's straight. Let's see, shall we? Yes. And I'm going to put dimensionals on the back of this. And yes, that's a lot of dimensionals, but I don't want this getting squashed by the post office machines. So I'd rather use a couple of extra dimensionals and know that it's going to arrive as it left me.
Okay. So I'm going to just pop that on at a bit of a, a jaunty angle. And then I'm going to tie a bow. Let's see how I do tying a bow live, shall we? This is real red sheer ribbon. It's really pretty. Um, I like the satin edges and then the kind of organza center to the ribbon. As always, when I'm tying a separate bow, I don't do that first knot that you would normally tie if you were doing your shoelace. I just start off with the loops. Um, if you want more ideas for ribbons and knots, I did a Facebook Live a few weeks ago, which you'll find on the videos tab or on my YouTube channel. And you can have a look there. We did several different ways of tying this kind of bow. We did... Um, a few different knots, we did a, a, a bow with double loops, we did all kinds of things. So take a look at that if you want some ideas or tips. I always hold bows on with mini glue dots because it's just the best thing. They grab instantly and they're really strong. I've put two on there because I think the first one is probably going to fill up the hole in the tag so I'm using them almost like a dimensional with one on top of the other so all but a few stars that is my card front so let's put just a few of these on doesn't really matter where they go I'm just going to add some little tiny dots of glue and then just drop these in place Um, there we are, I was looking for a smaller one. There's two different sizes of these that are cut out by the die. So I didn't want them all to be the one size. I'm still covered in glue. I'm going to be picking this off all evening, aren't I? Do you ever get days like that where you're just a messy crafter? I'm obviously having one of those days. Okay, so that's my card front. And then I'm just going to do some simple stamping on the insert, which I think is inside, there it is. So I've got some more words here, which are from Peaceful Cabin. So this is the stamp set that coordinates with the same paper I'm using. So I'm gonna use this one. And I'm also going to use these trees on the inside love that set so I'm doing this in red it doesn't look straight I'm just gonna just gonna see if that's straight yes it is straight so it's straight on my block even if it doesn't actually look straight and then I'm going to use basic grey ink to stamp those trees. So I'm just going to ink up these two. There are three trees on the set, uh, on the stamp, but I don't need all three because I'm just going to kind of go off the edge here. So let's pop that inside. There we are. So I haven't yet made a hundred Christmas cards, which is what Sandy needs to do. And actually is probably about as many as I need to make as well. But that's one more to add on the pile at least. <laughs> so there we go. I'm going to quickly clean my stamps, give you a moment to look at those. And then we'll come on to something that is not Christmassy. Ooh, 
they're not even in shot are they let's move those over a bit see if I can do better on that right I'm going to pack everything away from my desk and move on sparkly paper is lovely it's a sort of a champagne color which means that it's going to work with silver it's going to work with gold but what if you don't want it silver gold or champagne what if you want it red or pink or yellow well you can do that because you can color this and that's what I've done on this card So you can hopefully see from the sparkle that I've used the glimmer paper in the background here on these two die cut leaves and I've coloured it green. If I lift that up I'm hoping you can see I've used um, evening evergreen for this one and soft succulent for this one. So I'm not sure that the camera is picking up, but in person, this one is definitely darker. So Sandy says she can't craft with me. I'm too efficient, so I'll follow on catch up. But whilst she's watching, she's busy time bows her Christmas cards. Well done, Sandy. Well done. I've done a lot of this in advance because I can't easily die cut underneath my camera. So I'm, I'm kind of a step ahead of you to start with. I'm also very aware that with this broken phone stand, my time may be limited. So I'm trying to work a bit quicker than I might usually. But that's OK. You craft away. Tying bows is actually quite therapeutic and you'll be ahead when you come to start on your Christmas cards. So you'll be very pleased with yourself. All right, so let me pull out some other things that I'm going to need. So I'm going to make a version of this, um, not the same, but something similar. Um, let me tell you some of the things I used on here. You can hopefully see that my white card here is embossed. So I've used the... Um, oh, no, I, I had it written on a bit of paper. Let me find my bit of paper so I can tell you the right name. The meadow dies. There we go. So these are slimmer dies for embossing. So they will fit in our um, cut and emboss machine, the mini one. They're, they're narrow enough to go through that little mini portable machine, uh, but they will also work with a full size machine. So I've used this one, which has got kind of leaves and butterflies on it for my background. I've cut my um, leaves and flowers and um, butterflies using the meadow dies. If you haven't got these, I want to know why not, because they are fabulous. Look at all those. Um, the coordinating stamps are also lovely. Um, I really like some of these images here. Uh, I like the words, but you definitely want the dies, even if you don't get the bundle. Um, you've got lots and lots of flowers and foliage. You've got a little tag. You've got this lovely stitched label. You've got two butterflies. Um, these little ones can be overlays for your leaves or they can be flower centers. Fantastic set of dies. So that's the dies that I have used. So I've got some cut out pieces here. So I've cut out the cornflower and the, the front ways on and the sideways on butterflies, a tag 
and two pieces of foliage. This one I've already coloured and then I'm going to show you what I did to colour it on this one. So I'm always aware of the time when I'm doing this live crafting with you and that's why I do some of the preparation in advance um, but I will do some colouring to show you. So this is my uh, card base. This is Evening Evergreen. It's a standard C6 card but what I've done as well is scored down the center and I'm going to fold it back so I'm going to make a Z fold card just as a change from this one but it's essentially all the same components. The only difference is that I folded the card front back on itself so that's an easy variation any time you want to do something that's a little bit different but still straightforward or if you want to make two cards at a time but you don't want to make them identical. I'm not very good at making two identical cards. They usually end up slightly different somehow so that's one way to do it. My layers are Magenta Madness and then Evening Evergreen and then I have my piece of embossed card here. All right, so first of all, let's colour this glimmer paper. So I'm going to do that in Evening Evergreen. So stamping blends will colour this beautifully. They dry very, very fast. And uh, because these are permanent markers, the ink will stay on here without beading on the surface. So I'm going to use the brush tip. Now be really gentle because you don't want to destroy the tip of your brush. And this glimmer paper is, you know, reasonably rough surfaced. But you can see I'm just colouring over the top. Sandy says it doesn't matter that she's not keeping up with my crafting. She's enjoying watching. Well, that's what it's all about, Sandy. I'm very glad to know you're enjoying it. So if I was pressing quite hard, each of these little pieces of glitter would be catching on the bristles of the brush tip and it would be all fraying. Um, but they're not because I'm being careful. So as long as you're careful, it will be fine. And I'm hoping you can see, let me lay that on something white and lift it up. Hoping you can see that that is now green. So I think this is really worth knowing because it suddenly makes this paper so much more versatile. I'm also going to colour these. I've got my cornflower here. So I cut these from watercolour paper because I absolutely love the texture. It's really thick with a slightly textured surface. Um, so the pieces just stand up a little bit when you put them on your card, but you could certainly use standard white card. And although it's watercolour paper, obviously I'm using my blends on this. I'm not using um, watercolour at all on it. So now I'm going to bring in um, my soft succulent stamping blends marker and just colour in the stem. Actually, I'll bring that's the light one. I'll just bring in the dark one and just add just a little bit of shading and then blend that with the light one and once that dries you just get a slight graduation of colour. If you haven't tried these markers yet they are very easy to use. They're alcohol based that makes them permanent and it also means that although I'm colouring in a fairly kind of sketchy way here once they dry you end up with beautiful smooth colour you know if you colour normally with felt pens, like water-based markers, um, then you you try and colour in neatly in lines, don't you, like this? Because those line marks show. But as you're looking at that, you can see those lines disappearing. So you get this beautifully smooth colour. I'm just going down the side of this because it's such thick paper. I'm actually colouring the sides there so I don't have any white showing. So that's my cornflower. I'm going to colour my butterflies magenta 
Um, I think I'm going to use... I've got the light and I've got the dark here. So I think we'll start off with the light. Gosh, that's bright, isn't it? I love a bright pink. It's always been my favourite. My mum used to call this colour shocking pink. I can remember having a dress this colour when I was about eight. I absolutely loved it. And pink is still my favourite colour. So... When you die cut these butterflies, there is a little raised area on their wing, which I've coloured with the dark marker, and then I've just blended over the top with the lighter one. Um, as that dries, it will just, I'll have some shading of colour, but it won't be quite as um, obvious as it is there. So let's do the same with this flat butterfly. So again, I'm just picking up those raised edges. The important thing when you're blending with these markers is to make sure that everything is wet as you're working. So you don't want to work on too large an area at a time. So I coloured in the light marker. Then while that was still wet, I added the dark marker. And while that was still wet, I'm adding some more light over the top. And the fact that it's all wet allows it to blend really nicely. So let's find a clean bit. Here we go. So this one here is drying. So you can see that it's it's blended. It's not nearly as obvious as it was. But now I have a question for you. I've got some crinkled seam binding ribbon here for my bow. And I'm going to colour it because I wanted a piece of ribbon that was the, a colour that would match in with my card. So are we going to go with blue or pink? Let me assemble these here just roughly. Uh, where are my layers? There we go. I'll put those by the side. I'm not going to put everything on there just in case some of the ink from the markers is still wet. So that's what I'm going to use. So what bow am I going to tie this with? Am I going to colour it this blue, which is light knight of navy, or the magenta? What do you think? I'm going to drink some tea while you decide. I'm sorry for the wobble on the stand. Did you see that? <laughs> Okay, I'm going to start to layer these pieces up while I wait for an answer. I haven't had a single answer yet, but there is quite a long lag today. I don't know why there's such a time lag on this. I guess what I say has to go somewhere before it comes back and is viewable on my iPad. I'm not very technically minded, but I'm guessing that's more or less what happens in layman's terms. It just takes a little while. So Mary's saying blue. Any other thoughts? I'll take a majority, so uh, if you've got a strong opinion, let me know. Okay, so here's my card base. Now, the only thing you have to remember about these Z-fold cards is if I put glue all over the back of this layer, when I stick it down, I'm going to actually stick my card shut so it's really important that you only glue the left hand side and yes I've got it wrong in the past in fact I've even got it wrong on camera so I'm trying really hard to get it right today K saying blue as well okay looks like it might be blue so let's stick that down I'm going to go with blue. I've had two votes for blue, which is interesting because I think I'd have done pink if it was down to me. So thank you for your help, ladies. OK, so you can also use your blends for colouring ribbon. And it's just a case of I sort of hold the brush tip flat 
and just stroking the colour over with a ribbon like this which is really thin it soaks through with a thicker ribbon you'd have to colour both sides but if you get some white ribbon you can have ribbon any colour you like with stamping blends you can also use them on your rhinestones on your pearls all kinds of embellishments because it's a permanent ink so it will colour pretty much anything oh and Sandy says blue too excellent so you're going to be very pleased with this ribbon <laughs> this is probably far more than I need um, but I'm going to do a double bow double looped bow on this so I do need a bit more ribbon than usual there so I've gone the full length of that with my stamping blend I'm just going to check the other side there's a few little paler patches actually so I'll just go over those now this does make the ribbon stiffer which is I don't know why obviously some kind of technical reason um, but it actually holds the bow if anything even better once you've coloured it because the ribbon is just a little bit firmer um, but yes this crinkled seam binding ribbon is lovely it looks like silk it isn't but it looks like silk um, and it's so easy to colour as you've just seen so I'm going to set that aside I'll tie the bow in a minute just make sure that that's absolutely dry I think it's dry now but uh, we'll just make sure all right so now I'm just going to stick my pieces in place So that's the first one. So this one I covered in coloured in soft succulent. And then this is the piece that I covered in coloured, can't speak today, coloured with evening evergreen. But whatever blend you've got will work on this paper. I was very excited when I discovered you could do that. Bring in my cornflower. I'm just putting little dots of glue down these fine parts. So the watercolour paper is heavy and I'm also sticking it to an embossed surface so once again it just needs a little bit more pressing down just to keep it where I want it. There we are. And then my butterflies. So actually I'm just going to colour the back of this a little bit more and then I can fold the wings back. So actually that has soaked through the paper quite well but let's just add a little bit of pink on there just so that you don't get a flash of white when it's stuck down. So I'm just folding the wings back. I'm just putting my thumbnail to one side of the body and folding the wing back and then doing the same on the other side of the body and then I'll add glue just on that body section and the wings will stand up then. And then this sideways, like half a butterfly, <laughs> um, I'm going to stick flat.
Now I have a rhinestone just to go here on my butterfly and I'm wondering whether to colour that blue as well. Let me get one out and have a look. So I put that there. I think that's a little bit silver. There's nothing else on here that's silver so I think I am going to do as I told you you can do and just colour that blue. There we are. Give that a minute to properly dry. Um, do my ribbon in a sec. Right, just need the tag. So for the tag I've got this teeny tiny stamp which says for you and it's from Hydrangea Haven. Again, there's a lot of stamps in this lovely set, so they're only shown at three quarters of their actual size, but it's this little one here. And I'm going to use Evening Evergreen ink. And again, I may be pulling this out of your view just to stamp it. I want to be sure that's dry. Our glue does dry very, very quickly, but that's a really um, juicy ink pad. So I'm just going to give it a little bit longer than I normally would need to. Here's my blue rhinestone. You can see how beautifully that stamping blend has coloured it. And that's better. That coordinates better now, I think. So now I'm going to glue that little tag on. And I'm going to put my bow here, so I'm going to glue my tag down here. And now I'm going to tie a double looped bow. Now I did one of these last week and I don't know what happened to my words last week. I don't think I explained it at all clearly, so I'm going to try again. So with my non-dominant hand, I'm right-handed, so I'm using my left hand. Um, I'm going to hold the end of the ribbon, leaving a little tail between my thumb and my middle finger. And then I'm going to move my index finger up to measure the size of my bow. So the size of my bow is going to go from, this is um, across from one loop to the other loop. The size of my bow is going to go from the bottom of my index finger to the top of my, sorry, bottom of my middle finger to the top of my index finger. So I think that's about the right width for the size of my project. And then I'm going to take the ribbon over the top finger, between them, and under the bottom finger. So that gives me one complete loop over the top and over the, and un, over the bottom, if you like. Then I'm going to come back between them and go over the top one between and over the bottom one again. That gives me two loops. Then I'm going to take the same working end of the ribbon across the middle and poke it through between my fingers and pull it out the end out the back. Bring it back round to the front and then from the bottom I'm going to poke it underneath itself. So this strip here is the bit that went round and behind, so I'm just going to poke that end underneath that loop and pull it tight. And this will then be what holds the bow together in the middle. And I think, some, did something come adrift there? Doesn't feel right, so let's just do that again. It doesn't hurt to do it again, because then I can talk you through it and show you again. I think something came off my finger as I was explaining. Okay, so space my fingers over, between, under, between, over, between, under, between, through to the back. And then up from the bottom. And this is where really, if you had three hands, it would be a little bit easier. Never mind. That's better. So 
I'm going to pull that tight, I slip it off my fingers and there we go. There is my double bow, double looped bow I should call it because we talk about a double bow don't we in, in a different context. Just pull that really nice and tight. Okay and then I just need to trim the ends. I really love this way of tying bows. It's quite new to me. I've only fairly recently learnt it. And I just think it makes such a pretty bow. So that's ready to go on here with, of course, a couple of glue dots. Unless it's a teeny tiny bow, I usually use two glue dots just to make sure that I've covered a nice big area. There we are. I've still got a little bit of blue ribbon left. That will go for something else. So that's my card front. And now I'm just going to very simply stamp the inside with a happy birthday. Now I know this looks crooked because I stuck the label on crooked but I did check it was on the block straight before I started. And when I put my insert in what I don't want is to be able to see any of that insert poking over the top here or underneath for instance. So it is exactly the same colour as that magenta layer, at least I hope it is if I've measured it right. Yeah. So what I always do is I open my card like that. I put the glue on the back of my insert as usual. Getting to the point where I need some more glue. And then once I've got glue on there, I lay it down glue side up and I'm matching it to these two corners and that side of my front layer like that. So I'm laying it exactly on top and I'll hold it in place and then I fold the card back over, hopefully without moving anything. And then it's in the card and it's on the front and it's not quite straight because I moved something. There we are. Let's just slide that a weeny bit. That's better. So there we are. That is my Z fold card. Very easy to make a Z fold instead of a, a standard kind of cold, uh, card and just a little bit more interesting maybe. Now I've got one more card to show you and I'm going to try and go quickly because with the starting late I'm already running just a little bit late. Let's leave those there for you to see just while I have a bit of a clear up. Clean my stamps and move them because otherwise I absolutely know that I'm going to lay my arm across them. Thank you Kay. Kay likes the card. So yeah I, I was pleased with this I must admit I'm um, probably shouldn't say that should I about my own creations but, but I was very pleased with this one. Right this last one is actually pretty quick because again I've done most of the the die cutting, well I've done all the die cutting uh, and most of the time consuming bits. So let me show you my sample which is this one and I'm going to make it in some different colours. Lift that up a little bit so you can see the detail. So with this one I've used the Be Dazzling paper to 
cut a layer that sits on top of other layers. Now I know lots of you have really loved the hand penned suite. So my stamp underneath here is from hand penned petals. It's this one. And I've also used the thanks from the same set. Then I've used the hand, uh, no, the penned flowers dies. It's the coordinating dies anyway. So this one cuts out around the edges of the flower image. And then this one I used to cut the bedazzling paper. So you can see that it cuts a similar shape, um, gives you some outlines or some kind of detailing on, on the flowers and leaves from the stamped image. So you can use those um, together or you can use them individually as I have done. Right, let's pop that back in there. I've just found those tag dies. Let me show you very quickly. I was to put them in the wrong bucket. There you go. So these are the tag dies. So you have two designs of tag, four tags of each. They're both stitched. This one has a running stitch. This one has like a little dot stitch. And then these dies here in the middle cut your strengtheners for the tags. So this one cuts four circles at a time. This one cuts three of these little D shapes at a time. So these are absolutely lovely. I resisted them because, you know, I can cut a tag from a piece of card, but actually these are lovely. I love the stitch detail. I love the fancy tops. So, um, yeah, <laughs> they found their way into my craft room. All right, um, so back to the card. So this scalloped layer here and also this scalloped edging here, they're both stitched as well. They're both cut using the scalloped contours dies, which again are lovely. So you've got lots of layers here of all different shapes. Um, so I've used this particular die to cut my white layer and I've used this scallop stitched die along the bottom and these two cut out stamps which are in the colour and contour stamp set which coordinates with it. That's the scalloped contours dies. Alright let me pull out the bits. So my little tag here is from, um, I think it's the Hydrangea die set. But everything else I have explained to you. So I'm using the hand penned petals paper. I've got a thick basic white card base there. Then I've cut my layer again using the scalloped contours dies in just ordinary white card. Then I've die cut one of those tags, one from patterned paper and one from card. And this is just to give a little bit of body to the tag so that if I want to, I can put it up on some dimensionals on here. Then I've stamped and die cut this and I'm just going to finish off the colouring. That's my glimmer paper piece. And that's it, basically. So I'm just going to colour in those last two little flowers. Um, there we go, I'm just looking for my markers. So again, I'm using stamping blends. These are Highland Heather. Now you can really do quite scribbly colouring with them, as I was saying earlier because you don't get left with any lines once you've done your blending. So I've put just a few little areas of darker on there. I'll just go over those with some light. It just blends the edges of the dark strokes 
so they merge light into dark. This is a very small area, so in a way, um, there's probably no need to shade it. There's not a lot of space or scope for shading, but sometimes it's nice to just add a little bit. So I'm working quite quickly so that I'm adding my dark marker onto wet ink and then I'm going over the dark with the light one while it's still um, wet. This needs a little bit more blending. There we are. I'm going to do the centers with Calypso Coral. This is dark Calypso Coral. There we are. So that's just finished that. And then I'm going to add this over the top like that. Now I did cut this with, uh, let me get the right name, some adhesive sheet on the back of it. So this is a whole sheet of glue, basically. You peel off one side of the adhesive and stick it to your card. Then you do your die cutting. And then when you peel off the other side, the other backing of the adhesive, which is what I'm doing now, there is glue all over your die cut. So for something really detailed like this, it's fantastic because this is now a sticker. It's ready glued. There's no faffing around on all those little thin, fine places. I'm just going to be careful before I stick it down and make sure that I've got everything lined up because you don't get a second chance. On the other hand, this isn't an exact science. It's all fairly approximate. This doesn't have an exact fit to it. So even if it's not perfect, it will be fine. There we go. So you can see that stuck down straight away. Perfect. Let's do a little bit of assembly. my first layer of paper then I've got my die cut card That stitched edging makes a slightly bumpy mark on the back so I always find I just have to just work it a little bit more to get it to lie flat. There we are. So now I'm going to glue these two tags together. As I say the, um, the card one is simply to give a little bit more body to the paper one so that I can put some dimensionals on the back and raise it up a little bit. And of course, because they're die cuts, the two fit together perfectly. So let me see if I can find my dimensionals. As always, my desk looks like a disaster zone. I move as much as I can as I go, but <laughs> well, I'm not a tidy crafter anyway. I always end up crafting in about four square inches of space, despite the fact that I've got a very large desk. Um, with stuff everywhere. I'm sure some of you are like that. So again, lots of dimensionals because I don't want this to get dented as it goes through the rollers in the post office sorting office. to stick my sparkly flowery piece on top a 
like that and you can see that I've picked up similar colors so I've used pale papaya marker here that's in the paper I've used Highland Heather here and that's in the paper there as well my green is granny apple green and I've cut one of the little tiny circular pieces for my tag from granny apple green card So instead of a thank you card, I thought I'd make a congratulations card. So I'm using the same hand pen petal set and I'm using this little congratulations here. And I have Highland Heather ink. Move those adhesive sheets off my desk, <laughs> make a little bit more space. And I have my foam mat here because I'm using a photopolymer stamp Let's see if I can get this in the middle there we are oops turn it over that's better right let's just decide where I'm going to put this Oh, there I think so I'm going to need a dimensional underneath this just to support it on that end and then I will just glue the rest flat and that should mean that it all sits nice and flat because this bit I'm putting the glue on is going onto a piece that's already been raised up That just needs to, to grab there. And then I'm going to finally tie a bow. So I've got some pale papaya ribbon here. This is, I'm trying to never remember what it's actually called, open weave ribbon. There we go. So I'm just going to tie an ordinary bow for this. So I don't start off with a knot. I just make the loop and then tie the bow. This is the way I always tie my shoes but some people like to do a bunny ears bow where they make two loops and tie them in a knot. I can do that, but it's, it doesn't come naturally to me. Which way does that loop want to go? That way, I think. Okay, trim that off. Find my glue dots. A couple of those side by side on the back. And pop that on the top. So that's the front of my card. And on the inside, I'm just going to stamp uh, the flower design. with the same black ink that I used to stamp it on the front. And this time I'll pop my foam mat under my grid paper because I'm going to stamp off the edge of my card base. Because it's a white card, I haven't uh, cut an insert separately. There we are. So that's my final card. Give you a minute to look at that. And we got through without the stand collapsing, which frankly is a miracle. It's on a bit of a lean, but um, it, it made it through to the end. Now all I have to do is get 10 miles of duct tape off my desk. But anyway, that's a job for later. <laughs> All right, so let me bring in all the cards I made today for you to see. If I haven't convinced you now, 
to get some of this absolutely gorgeous paper I don't know what will convince you really um, I just absolutely love it let me put that one on that side it's it's tilting that way because it's got a folded front I'm trying to get them in shot for you but I can't see what you can see till my iPad catches up so let's see if that's better that's better I think let's move that one up a little bit too there we are so three ideas for using glimmer paper as layers and die cuts sparkly sparkly as it comes out of the the pack um perfect for christmas cards or die cut as it comes out of the pack but not for christmas cards or finally color it which makes it incredibly versatile you can coordinate it to all your projects just use stamping blends markers because they're alcohol ink um, that ink will stick to the glimmer dry beautifully and very quickly and you can have it any color you like thank you Pam I'm glad you like the cards it was lovely to have you here I'm just going to cover you over and bring you back up hopefully We'll see, we'll see if, if everything collapses. I'll just hold it in my hand and say goodbye, but we might just make it. Let's try. The balance of the whole thing is changed when I put it up this way, which is, oh no, okay, I'm gonna hold it. I won't be able to move very much. I'll just wait for everything to catch up so I can see what you can see. Scoot back a bit, which might be better. Okay. So Maureen says, thank you. You're very welcome, Maureen. Lynn, nice to have you. Thank you. I'm glad you like the ideas. Um, you're very welcome, Sandy. So people are saying goodbye to each other. It was lovely to have you. I will hope very much to see you again next Friday, assuming I've managed to get myself a new stand by then, because I don't think I'm going to be able to tape this on a second time. Have a fantastic weekend. Remember that if you want to watch this again on YouTube, it won't be uploaded until Monday this time, because I can't do it this afternoon. Um, but I will look forward very much to seeing you again another time. And thank you so much for joining me. Bye-bye.